Welcome back to the Sports Max Zone. We kick things off with football and the UEFA Champions League. Match day two of the group stage ended a short while ago. And in Group H at the Dragon Stadium in Portugal, Spanish champions Barcelona paid a visit to FC Porto. We have the highlights. Slashing here and there, and it's the visitors from Spain who get the game underway. Varela, that's a nice turn. Opportunities here. And the shot is patted down. Varela with a decent looking ball, which is collected by Galeno, who's running at Jao Cancelo here. Rolled back into a good position, driven into the box. This could fall anywhere, and that'll be a penalty, will it? Kunde, as Tereni turned, appeared to catch the Porto striker. Elena's little ball is a good one, pulled back in, Tereni attacking the near post and Ter Stegen got himself in the right place and got himself a little bit lucky as well maybe. Yeah, a little deflection on the way to the keeper. So, just slips out of his hands for a second. Eustachio square, this looks interesting, Ter Stegen right behind the shot. Pretty comfortable save. Araujo's forward ball and there could be a break on here because João Félix is charging forward. Ferran Torres is in support. This is Ferran Torres who goes for goal and it's saved by Diego Costa. Barring crossing the eyes and dotting the T's as the host of the World Cup in 2030. Here's a great ball through to Ferran Torres and Barcelona lead and Porto who have had the lion's share of opportunities in this game and have missed them fall behind in first half stoppage time they've been below par for much of this half but they're going to go in at half time a goal to the good that's a goal brought down well and Ter Stegen there again now I'm not to wonder whether uh, Tereni was offside or not Brilliant pass by Pepe. It's all sorts of space. He might just have stayed onside, but it's a familiar theme now, isn't it? They're getting into these kind of positions, but can't find the finish. That's a stray pass, and there might be a sucker punch on again here as the ball is played into Ferran Torres and fair play to Fabio Cardoso for making the block, but the final whistle is gone and Barcelona have taken charge in Group H, making it two wins in two. All right, a Ferran Torres goal there, getting the win for Barcelona. Our football correspondent, Juan Gio Rango, was following the match and he joins us this afternoon. Juan, how are you? Hey, what's up, everybody? How are you? How's it going? Uh, we're doing well. I mean, wins for Barcelona, wins for Manchester City. Things are good on our end. Talk to me about Ferran Torres's goal today and, of course, you know, the fact that he came in for Lewandowski, who picked up that injury, mm -hmm. and he sealed the winner. Well, it's 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 a it's a big win for Barcelona, especially, I mean, as you saw in the first half. And in parts of the second, where, where Porto went for broke, yeah, there were a couple of controversial calls here and there, but, but I think for the most part, the team that ended up, I guess, regulating the match a little bit more ended up winning. And also, to me, the man of the match ends up being Mark andre Ter Stegen, as he's accustomed us during the past few years of, of being that, that, that really that wall in the back of that defense, being the most consistent aspect of Barcelona over the past decade almost. You end up seeing how he ends up really becoming this contributor and this leader of sorts in very difficult times. And that, that being said, I mean, you got to remember also Barca played, I think, the last seven minutes or so, a man down after Gavi was, was sent off. But more importantly, it's, it's capitalizing on mistakes of Porto that ended up being the difference. That's the reason why Ferran Torres was able to score the only goal of the match, taking advantage of an errant pass, of an errant ball that ends up really falling in favor and Joel Felix finding the, the right target, finding the right player to be able to finish it. Yeah, 
that, that's you know definitely I have to agree with you because we've spoken about Tistegan last season a lot about him and you know the reason why Barcelona was able to win La Liga had a, a lot of credit had to go to him one now of course today we see the youngster Lamine Yamal stepping up so it's two opposites we had the senior man doing what he had to do Lamine Yamal is having a beautiful breakout season and he's one to really watch very closely yeah, you know what? It's interesting you say that, the fact that it, to watch him very closely, and we're going to have to watch him very closely for a long time at 16, almost 17 <laughs> years of age. I mean, today he became one of the youngest players in Champions League history to, to be able to, to to start, first of all, to be able to contribute and, and to be able to, to play the way he did. I mean, it shows you the temperament that this young man has. And of course, the sky's the limit in terms of what he's capable of doing on the pitch. Yeah, two wins for Barcelona from two matches. Uh, you touched on it, but I want to talk a bit some more. Gavi, a player that I have a lot of time for, uh, being sent off today, not good for Barcelona, but, you know, they'll walk away and take the win, the three points. Well, yeah, and it puts them one step closer to the initial objective. I, I think as, as the tournament progresses, that, that objective ends up getting pushed forward as much as possible. But yeah, you're right. Is it a big loss? Yeah, it is a pretty big loss. But then that was part of the gamble that Xavi had when he made the substitutions originally, leaving a bunch of players that were already with a yellow card on the pitch, saying, hey, you know what? You have to be able to understand and manage the game. And well, in that particular moment, Xavi, or excuse me, Gavi wasn't capable of doing it. But again, he, he's one of those youngsters that more often than not has been vital to Barca's success over the past nearly year, ever since year, year plus, ever since Xavi's taken over. Yeah, and, and Juan, just before you, you, you leave that, they, um, a lot of people still not completely sold on Xavi as a top flight coach. And obviously Barcelona um, is in the mode of trying to recapture some of their, their glory days. A tough game today. Porto is an easy team. Mm -hmm. uh, they were actually, um, statistically, they had more <clears> dangerous <throat> attacks and more shots on goal than yes. Barcelona did. But uh, overall, um, seeing what you saw today and the <laughs> opener that they had, back-to-back -back wins now for them, um, do you see this Barcelona team building and uh, putting themselves in a position to challenge for the title? Ooh, well, I, th I think that, that that's a bit of a, of, an, of a target that's a little bit too far still for them. Uh, I mean, we have to see how, how when, when they start facing stiffer opposition, when they face the Arsenals, the Cities, the Bayerns of the world, see how they react in those types of situations. The Real Madrids, although they've had a pretty good success against Real Madrid over the past couple of, of encounters. But that being said, like I said uh, previously, you have to start seeing that when they do get out of the group stage and into the round of 16 and progressively. So how do they start performing? And it, it's it's a long-term project for Xavi. And yes, is he going to have detractors? Absolutely. Because obviously his, his career is a little bit different compared to most European managers where it started and, and where it's gone to. It's something that, that really ends up kind of dividing, I guess, poles when it, when it comes yeah. to... Uh, analyzing a coach and, and where he's come from and what he's been capable of doing and what he's been able to do with the team that he's had in front of him. Of course, not being able to get out of the Champions League over the past two seasons for Barcelona ends up being a, a burden to him. And again, this is the year that he's going to truly be tested yeah. on, that, on that level. Yeah, I had to ask because there are a lot of Barcelona fans watching, yeah. so I, I guess they just wanted your take on it. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, we're going to continue now and Manchester yes. City... They entered today's contest with RB Leipzig on the back of two successive domestic losses. Of course, they walked away as 3-1 winners over Manchester, over RB Leipzig. When you watched them today, what did you mm -hmm. make of their performance? Manchester City is back. Well, were they ever gone? Yeah, I mean, over I the weekend. You were, you, were, you were probably freaking out because they lost two games and oh my God, the world is coming to an end and oh, what is, what is to be of Manchester City? No, but... Uh, you know what? A couple of weeks ago, uh, Pep Guardiola was asked about why Julian Alvarez, you know, what is the role? Why, why is he still there if, if he's not a starter? And he said, well, he is a starter, but the rotation of it all doesn't really have him in every sense of the word starting every time. And of course, when you have an Erling Haaland, that ends up being very difficult to be able to, um, to just kind of like brush aside. Today, he comes in and he ends up making that difference. I mean, we have to start from backwards to forward, from 
end to beginning in this particular case because he comes in and does change the dynamic of the game a lot comes in and scores and of course the, towards the, in stoppage time is the one that kind of sets off everything that scores the game pretty much the, the one that kills off the game and you see what he's capable of doing alongside Erling Haaland and you say why, why can't he play more but the impact is always there every time he comes off I've heard even in South America a couple of times people comparing him already to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and I think that's I don't know. I, I think this, you have a, a more skillful player in, in Julian Alvarez and, and uh, a, a more intelligent player and, and a more uh, diverse player in, or, or that can play in different areas of the pitch compared to Solskjaer. But if you look at what he is capable of doing for City, he opens a lot of other options. But then today, you had a lot of other performers being able to come through. I mean, Phil Foden scores the opener. And, and uh, you see this City side that said, OK, fine, we got... we. We got hit twice. Big deal. Let's go ahead. And even when they when they had the match equalized, you saw them continuing to go forward and persist. And that ball eventually was going to get through. But again, it had to be a player like Alvarez to truly make the difference from outside. Yeah, and Juan, you know, whenever Manchester City is on an unbeaten run, people talk about how great Pep Guardiola has been tactically. Mm -hmm. They speak about all the different things that he does. Today, you know, I felt his use of the substitution was so brilliant, right? Because these mm -hmm. players come on as subs. Both of them, of course, get the goals for you. And to me, that's one of Pep's style, you know, him being a magician, a tactician versus starting the players. Because many people, you know, I, was, I, mm -hmm. I tend to, when I'm looking, at the matches I tend to always look to see you know what the viewers have to say what what they're saying on Twitter and all that well X now and for me everybody was saying you know why doesn't he start Julian Alvarez why isn't Phil Foden starting just randomly calling out things but to me I felt as if using these players as subs work for Pep so why not I mean yeah you have to look at at the, at the match and contextualize it and, and see okay I mean, for someone to say Julian Alvarez has to start and Erling Haaland doesn't, yeah. that's a bit of a stretch. And, and, and mind you, I, I understand both sides, but it's kind of hard to kind of say, well, yeah, you're right on either one. Yeah. But it, it, it's so complicated with the amount of players you have. And you have to keep a rotation. You have to keep a certain level of freshness, knowing that you have match I'm at basically every three to four days, knowing that you're going to have a break very soon. And then all of a sudden going from, I don't know, uh, November to January and, and going into February, if you start including the FA Cup, the amount of matches City is going to have, including Champions League, you have to have everybody playing and, and having a certain level of performance on a consistent basis. So, so we have to look at it from, from that perspective, from the, from the collective, instead of looking at individual, oh, so-and-so is not playing. Well, so-and-so has to be able to play and perform in certain levels. And they all have so far. Yeah, yeah. okay, they had a couple of losses. And I know it, it's something frustrating for City fans, for now City fans, that, that are, are, are looking at this and saying, oh my God, they lost two games. Pep Guardiola is the worst manager ever. And now they win today. And all of a sudden, he's the best, the best in the world once again. Yeah. Um, Juan, before we leave yes. Man City, part of their strength for the past uh, few years has been their depth. I saw one of the mm -hmm. match reviews today that had Rico Lewis, the 18-year-old, as as their man of the match. How good how yeah. good was he today? You don't have to tell me. I don't have to say it too. Pep said it, and it was this. I mean, his quote was just one word: "Wow." And that's basically what he said at the press conference, and he's absolutely right because Rico Lewis was able to play a sensational game today, and and. It's not only the players that he's acquired, it's also the players that have been able to, to come up and grow within City and, and truly be a, a major force in European football. All right, Juan. Well, we're going to take a quick break, but when we return, we'll continue. We still have football to talk about. We're going to be talking about football in Europe as we preview the Europa League. Stay with us. <laughs> 